Hi Kingdom Kids. Many of you have already been through the Tracker's Old Testament program. If you have, you know that throughout the Old Testament there were prophets who spoke of a coming Savior. In fact, the Old Testament ends with the announcements of Malachi. Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament and was the last prophet of the Old Testament. Malachi is in part an announcement of the coming Messiah. God sent many prophets to tell of the coming King and you may have studied many of them. When God told his people all he intended to tell, the stage was then set for the completion of it all, the completion which is found in Jesus. Before we go further in this lesson, let's check in with our barn friends and see what they are up to. Trackers of Faith, featuring Duke and Luke, the Barn Brothers, Penny, the cold cracking tech savvy gal who is quick on her feet, Walker, the big-hearted handyman who uses his mechanical know-how to lend a helping hand. Jenny, the fun-loving biblical brains of the operation. And Milton, this super sassy swine has been fitted with the latest in animal communication technology. Join this crew of high-tech heroes as they sow truth, know truth, and grow truth. Directors of Faith! This sunrise is beautiful. It's weird not having Penny here, though, to watch it with us. Yeah, this moment feels a little incomplete without her. I bet that's how the disciples felt after Jesus was crucified. I bet you're right. There were three really dark days when the followers of Jesus were lonely and confused. After all, they believed Jesus was who he said he was, so when he died on a cross like a criminal, it probably caused them to second-guess everything they believed. I've been thinking. We all know that the cross wasn't at all the end of the story, but we never got to see the rest. The rest is the best part. The resurrection was that show-stopping moment when all of the Old Testament prophecies about Jesus were finally fulfilled. Jesus defeated death. He absolutely, definitely was who he said he was. Well, now we have to go back. Who's got the flashlight? I do, brother. Let's go. There's Mary Magdalene. Shh. Woman, why are you weeping? They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Whom are you looking for? Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. She doesn't recognize him? Why would she? She's definitely not expecting to see him alive. She thinks he's the gardener. Mary. Rabbi, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father to my God and your God. This is seriously major. This makes Mary Magdalene, a woman, the first witness of the resurrection. That wasn't an accident. Jesus himself told her to testify to what she had seen and preach what was basically the first gospel message, that not only had Jesus died, he had also been resurrected and would ascend into heaven. Penny would love to see this. It looks like Mary's leaving to tell the disciples what she's seen. I guess we better go back now. <laughs> That was wild. From the first time I heard about Jesus' resurrection, I knew that I needed to give my life to following him. But seeing that event firsthand just makes me even more convinced. This means something important for us too, you know. What do you mean? I mean that Jesus' body was resurrected, right? After we die, our bodies will become resurrected too. Our eternal life, which includes our minds, our souls, our spirits, and our bodies, will be redeemed all because Jesus was raised from the dead. As Christians, we'll live with God, the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit forever. Amen and hallelujah. That's amazing. <laughs> you got that right. So who can tell me something they learned from the video? You may remember the story of God's people in Egypt. They had been slaves for many, many years, and God sent Moses to rescue them from slavery. The problem was that Pharaoh would not let the people go, so God sent many plagues to convince Pharaoh to release them. The last consequence was the death angel. It was a terrible time in Egypt when the death angel passed through and all the firstborn died. But God's people did not die because they had listened to God's instruction and had taken the blood of a perfect firstborn lamb whose bones were not broken and put it on the doorposts of their homes. When the death angel passed through, it passed over the homes that had the blood covering. 
That is why the yearly celebration is called Passover. The death angel passed over God's people and as a result, they were released from slavery. This was a great event in the history of the Israelites. However, for Christians, we know this was a foreshadowing of what was to come when Jesus came to earth. In Exodus, we see how God freed his people from the physical slavery in Egypt. And when Jesus came to earth, he freed us from spiritual slavery. Have you ever thought about why it was a lamb that was sacrificed? Do you remember the story of Cain and Abel? Abel's sacrifice was pleasing to God, but Cain's was not. What did Abel sacrifice? Abel sacrificed a lamb. When Abraham was called to sacrifice his son, his only son, what sacrifice did God provide instead? It was a ram, which is a male grown lamb. The celebration of Passover was a reminder that a lamb was sacrificed in place of the oldest child to provide freedom to the Israelites. Jesus, of course, was born in Bethlehem, for he was to be the sacrificial lamb of God to save us from our spiritual slavery. In the New Testament, we find that John the Baptist calls to Jesus saying, look, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. In Revelation 5, we read of a lamb that was slain and was worthy to receive honor and praise. Who is this lamb? Jesus fulfilled what the Passover lamb represented and was the sacrifice in our place. So we know that Jesus entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. We're going to talk today, the rest of the time, on Jesus' last week.